I've just had my Raspberry Pi um, touchscreen turn up and I just want to show how easy it is to put these together. First thing is you've got these pin connectors here. Um, they want to go to the far end. You can see that's where your uh, monitor connector is. See here? So you just want to line these pins up. Let's, let's do this and then you can see. Just push that in there. As you can see, it's lined up. You want, you want to make sure you're on the end pins. Oops, I've missed the one row, haven't I? It's difficult to do this. There you go. There you go. So you don't want any pins exposed at the back here. You want to make sure it's on the end one and there's nothing exposed inside. There you go. And then what you've got, this little adapter here, just connects across the two. Like so. And it's as simple as that. Now, I've just got to reach across and grab a power lead. Okay, so, got it connected up. And it's got two power connectors here. One for, so you can just run the monitor on its own. And one, uh, which is obviously the Raspberry Pi. But you will find, as long as you're not overloading the Raspberry Pi and got a good um, power adapter, it will actually boot no problems. There we go. And I'll just see if it's booting up. It's hung. It's one of the things I do find prone with the Raspberry Pi is it sometimes just doesn't boot. Again. Oh, SIM card wasn't in. Okay, so unplug that. So it happens to us all. We all do silly things sometimes. Okay, so plug that back in. And there you go. What's this error here? Um it's actually to do with the settings according to the software which I'm going to run through and test in a minute anyway but I just want to show you it booting up how quick and easy it is to install it and as you can see it's only showing on this side but I believe there's a way to move that across by adjusting the settings same thing is I don't know if I could actually read this screen to do it <laughs> because um, obviously I want to use this as a touch screen not actually a monitor so let me have a look and I'll come back okay to get the screen to go full screen we need to go sudo nano so here we go sudo space nano space forward slash boot forward slash config dot text then what we want to do is scroll down because you want to give it a specific mode. This one will do. Um, so we're going to go HDMI group 2, HDMI mode 1, HDMI mode 87, HDMI CV2 800-480, which is the screen dimensions, 60, 6, 1, 2, 3, 0, 0, 0. Start file. Start X dot elf fix up file fix up x dot elf gpu 
mem 128. Now we've got it ready, just control zero. And as you can see, it's written it. And I'll just press enter, then control X, and we'll come out of that. Oh, control O to save. As you can see, it says there at the bottom, save file, then control X comes out. And that's it ready, so we just do a reboot now and see if it's actually fixed the problem we've got for the screen. Uh, ah, choose identity one, I'll reboot it. Uh, okay, it's now rebooting. So we're now rebooting after our little adjustment. You can see we still got that little bit of an error on there and they suddenly shot full screen so we've actually fixed the issue relating to the screen not being wide enough um, and there we go straight in no problems up and running next thing is sorting out the touch screen because at the moment touching won't do anything i need to sort that out next yeah.